let's talk view templates for interior elevations. Very specific, I know, but I got a question about it, so here we go. Hi everyone, I'm Berti with BIM Lounge. Stay tuned for our weekly BIM productivity videos. Now, when you first create an interior elevation, it always looks like this. And uh, of course, you may wanna have a tool like the view template that allows you to be consistent and save time. Now, let's get into it. Now, let's keep this as actionable as possible. These are some of my recommended starter settings and they may not apply to 100% of the situations, but hopefully they'll provide enough information for you to start and develop your own view templates. View templates are a great way to stay consistent and save time while drawing your interior elevations. Now in my experience, there are two main types of interior elevations, the architectural or presentation type that focuses more on visualization and the construction drawing types, which will be the focus of this video. The construction drawing type will typically help with uh, obtaining a permit and or provide enough information for the contractor to build the space properly. Examples of spaces that need to be elevated are restrooms, break rooms, kitchens, all the spaces that cannot be described with a, just a floor plan and need to be elevated to show elements in 3D and work out conflicts. There are many view settings that you can control within Revit and the way I like to break them down since I enjoy photography is to look at some of these first items as the view geometry settings which basically correspond to camera settings. Think about it, scale, framing, lighting, and the second category here is visibility, which corresponds to the subject. If you think about it, what you're seeing in this view, whether you're using the glasses, the bulb, or the visibility and graphics menu. Now, I do have a couple of uh, elevations and corresponding floor plans so we can uh, see the changes in real time. Now, on this top elevation, I don't have a view template applied, so all these functions are available to me from the view control bar, which is this one. Now, on this other elevation, I do have a view template applied, which is why I see some of these items are grayed out to me, including the visibility and graphics, because I'm supposed to control all these view settings within the view template. Every time you create a new interior elevation, you're faced with um, adjusting the crop of the view. And I've already started this, so all I need to do here is uh, adjust it to match the ceiling. But I just wanted to show you this view because you may also use your interior elevation to um, coordinate with other disciplines. But for the moment, I'm just going to set this view crop there. And by the way, there's a way to automate the creation of interior elevations. I have a video about it. I'll put a link in the description. Now, before we get into the visibility and graphics for this live model, I'd like to take a moment and do a first cleanup of all the elements from linked models that we don't need. So let's go ahead and uh, head over to, to visibility and graphics for the Revit links, so VV or VG. And I'm going to set this model to custom and we're going to head over to annotations and let's find grids and levels let's hit ok and then let's apply the same thing to mechanical so again custom annotation custom here and then grids and levels just to make sure Okay, so at this point, these grids and levels are the ones from our model. So let's go ahead and hide those two so we can start looking at the elevation and with, a, with a clear base. So again, visibility and graphics of the top elevation and annotation and let's hide the grids and the levels. That's much better. Now let's take a look at some of the categories that you may want to include or exclude in your view template as far as visibility and graphics. For example, I have some furniture which is in the way and of course I could head over to my floor plan and move the plane so it's closer to my cabinets which is fine. 
but I'd like to actually keep that where it is because furniture is probably one of those categories that you may want to hide. So let's go ahead and head over to the visibility and graphics again. Now again, these are the settings that I typically use. So of course you'll have to customize this list for your needs. Let's look at some of the categories that I generally turn off. For example, I would turn off entourage unless you really need to show something that's under the category, but I wouldn't. Furniture and furniture systems, and that will get rid of that furniture. And then parking for sure. Planting typically is not showing. And then uh, roads, even though you may not have any roads drawn in your model. And rooms. And of course, sight and topography. Now, what are some of the annotation categories that you may want to turn off? We've already hidden grids and levels. Now, what I recommend for elevations and sections, you can keep them on and uh, you'll realize that some of them will be in the way. Some of them don't really are not really needed in that view and some of them are not referenced. But what I use to get around that or unreferenced view is head over to the print screen and uh, set this up to hide unreferenced views. This will get rid of all the views that are not placed on a sheet and uh, that's a huge help. Now, of course, this elevation isn't finished, but it's probably a good starting point for us to create a view template. So what you want to do at this point, since this is elevation 4A, is head over to that elevation in the project browser and uh, right click and click on create view template from view. And let's call this interior elevations. And as you can see now, all these settings are stored into the elevation, into your elevation view template. In this view, it's not currently assigned, so make sure it says into your elevations here. And now it is assigned, as you can see here, it updated. Now to apply a view template, all you need to do is uh, select the view in the project browser or keep it active and head over to the view template area here in the properties and select that interior elevation template that we just created. Perfect, so now all the visibility and graphics and scale have been applied and now we can keep it consistent. Whenever we change something in the interior elevations view template, that will apply to all the views that have that template applied. Now, of course, you know we can always adjust the view crop to this and uh, add our annotations, tags, uh, text notes and so on and you'll find that as you bring in more items you need to make some tweaks and adjustments but as far as how to create and uh, how to come up with a new view template for interior elevations this is probably a good starting point Now let me know if you have any questions and also I'm open to video requests so let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.